don't understand what the fudge cakes did where where did it all go wrong <laughs> ghost doctor isn't your average medical drama it's more of a fight for justice supernatural world medical drama burrito and that's a mouthful even for a burrito but the question is is this the type of burrito that you want to consume? Keep watching to find out. In this 2022 K-drama, we meet the handsome, talented, and arrogant Dr. Cha and his carefree but squeamish intern, Soon Ta. One day after Dr. Cha has an accident that leaves his body in a coma and his spirit roaming around the hospital aimlessly, Soon Ta becomes his unlikely ally, forcing the two to work together. This is a great show. It had supernatural elements that were totally plausible, if you ask me. I totally felt by the end of it that this is exactly how hospitals are. There are spirits everywhere just roaming the hallways unbeknownst to the living. It's hard to categorize this show because there's a little something for a lot of different audiences, which is not exactly uncommon, but I think it's hard to do as well as this show did it. It's a friendship storyline with a romance set in a hospital with ghosts. So if you want to watch a friendship story, this is a good option. And if you want to watch a romance, this is a good option. And if you want to watch a medical drama, this is a good option. And if you want to watch a supernatural drama, this is a good option option. This is just a good option overall and I highly recommend watching it if you haven't seen it already. If you have watched it though, stick around for the next section of this video where we'll dive into the nitty gritty details of it all. So we've reached the end of the spoiler free review. If you like Asian dramas, I post videos every Friday so be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss a video. All right, let's talk about the hits, what we loved, what worked, what landed for us. Usually I'm not a medical drama girly, but the good thing about this show is that they actually only focus on heart surgeries and brain surgeries, and even then, they don't really go too deep into the medical stuff. I feel like sometimes medical shows can just be too much, and I sort of start to lose interest with all of the, you know, medical terms and all of that stuff. So even though it was set in a hospital, they focus more on the conflict and on the supernatural stuff, which I personally really enjoy. Of course, I have to mention the brotherhood friendship between the two main characters. Honestly, I couldn't even tell if this story was focused more on the friendship or more on the romance, but either way, I felt like they highlighted the relationship between Dr. Cha and Soon Tuck really beautifully. One thing I found interesting is that even though Dr. Cha was the mentor figure, I feel like he grew a lot from meeting Sun Tuk and Sun Tuk uh, Suntuk, Suntok, I'm not sure how to say his name. They both got something out of it, but I feel like Suntuk helped Dr. Cha change the trajectory of his life. Like he was going down a really bad path and by meeting him, his life changed, you know? I thought the ghost characters who were in the coma gave the viewers a visual representation of the reality of what it's like to be in a coma. Just the way that they were sitting in that waiting room day after day with no guarantees that they were actually going to wake up, that was so sobering. And I say them and not Dr. Cha because Dr. Cha was bound to wake up, right? This is a K-drama after all. He was the main character. So one day he was going to wake up. Ultimately, I don't really watch dramas to be reminded of real life, but I did appreciate what those characters bring to the story. I appreciated the full circle realization that Tess was the one who possessed Dr. Ta in the first place, and I sort of had a hunch about that, but he was also the one who saved Soon Tuck, which I did not see coming. I think he was the glue that sort of brought the whole story together, and he was kind of the narrator, even though he didn't actually narrate the whole thing, but he was kind of guiding the characters every step of the way, and I, I fully appreciated his character. All right, on to the misses, the shortcomings, and the not so great moments. 
I didn't realize I was a low-key Bum Kim fan until I was highly upset that he didn't get his happy ending scene with the love interest in the show. What was that whole scene about with the other resident doctor, you know, lending her the books and all of that? Why did it end on that? Like, I don't understand what the fudge cakes did. Where, where did it all go wrong? <laughs> okay, so uh, bear with me here. Maybe my memory is failing me, but I swear there was a scene where there was a black figure kind of lurking in the shadows. And I was honestly so excited about that, but then I never saw it again. And I wasn't sure if I just made up the whole thing or if it was actually in the show and they just like didn't talk about it anymore. Or maybe it was just like a thing that they mentioned in that one point. Like what was happening with that scene? I really don't know how I felt about the doctor going on dates with Soon Tak while he was possessed by Dr. Cha. Maybe it's because I'm a visual person, but I think I think it would get a little confusing, wouldn't it? Like, okay, he acts like Dr. Cha, but he looks like somebody else. I feel like I'd start to start mixing the two up. And honestly, I was getting them mixed up just by watching the show. I was like, okay, what's happening here? Also, I wasn't sure if they were showing Dr. Cha so that the audience understood that it was Dr. Cha in Soon Tuck's body, or if she was like visualizing the person in front of her being Dr. Cha. And I think, they could have used a little bit more like visual effects or something to kind of like overlay them or maybe do like a glitch moment. And they did do that in some of the operating scenes. So I guess that's one thing. But to be fair, they did change the person when they were changing like the camera angle. And maybe that was just like a simpler, more in budget way of doing things. I don't really know. This last one is not really a shortcoming. It's just more like a side note. I was honestly starting to feel really bad for the cousin at the end of everything because I could sympathize with his situation. You know, his mom was constantly pressuring him. The girl that he liked was in love with somebody else and his younger cousin of all people was getting a better deal in life. So I just felt like... Him and Dr. Ta were both bitter Bettys in the beginning of the show, but only one bitter Betty was able to overcome, you know, the negativity and self-sabotage in their lives. And I liked that bittersweet moment at the end where Sun Tuck was like, hey, listen, you're still my cousin and I'll be waiting for you. You know, I hope we can get to a better place. I thought that was a, a hopeful way of ending, you know, things on that front. Overall, like I said, totally worth the watch. This is available on Netflix as of the this recording, so definitely go check that out. And with that, we've reached the end of this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. I will see you guys in the next one.